Hello everyone, thank you for watching. This is Professor Ryan Paul, and this presentation is called Representative versus Biased Samples, and it's essentially a preparation for the homework assignment for this week. So, first off, let's talk about what is bias. What do we mean when we say something is biased? Well, it's useful to think about the original meanings, just for a second. Um, bias originally in geometry meant a line that was slanted, rather than a line that went straight, but a line that went across something. Um, and in games, like in billiards or bowls, which is a, like a version of bowling, um, it's the weight or balance of the ball that determines how it, will how it will roll, that it rolls to one side or the other. So the bias in the ball, in, in terms of games, is what determines which direction the ball will roll. Will it roll to the left? Will it roll to the right? Etc. So this gives us, I think, uh, a hint as to thinking about what bias means when we talk about it in contemporary usage. So when we talk about bias today, we normally mean something like an inclination or a tendency, a tendency towards some particular belief or action or assumption, uh, the predisposition to believe a certain thing or act a certain way, or prejudice, essentially, not prejudice in the negative sense of being racially prejudiced or something, but just in literally having prejudged. You've prejudged the situation, so you have a tendency to do certain things, believe certain things. Um, it can also be uh, a verb to bias something or to, to, to give bias um, is when you make something one-sided or you incline to one side, you try to influence or affect something. So you can see how the modern meaning of bias, meaning the tendency to, to go to one side or another or towards a certain type of belief or action, we can see how that develops from the previous, the older meanings, uh, like a line that goes diagonally across a plane or a ball that instead of rolling straight rolls off to one side or the other. So when we think about bias, then it's the tendency essentially to see things in a certain way, to interpret the world around you, people, situations in a certain way. And we all have our biases because we all have our own experiences that determine how we see things. And bias is not necessarily the same thing as deception or lying. That is, if, if a study or a report is biased, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's deceiving you. Although sometimes someone who's biased or something that's biased can be deceptive, can lie, but it's not necessarily the same thing. It's generally just the framing of issues towards a certain tendency. And bias can be unconscious. People might be biased one way or another on an issue or to, uh, in terms of a certain situation or belief and not even realize it. So bias is just, again, the tendency to see things in a certain way, not necessarily any sort of intentional uh, deception. So what are the effects of bias or how does bias manifest itself? Well, um, first it's in just the act of prejudging an issue or situation or person according to beliefs that you already have, your pre-existing beliefs, rather than taking the situation or the issue or the person on its own terms. So when you come to a situation and you apply your pre-existing beliefs and opinions to it, rather than seeing what's actually in front of you, that's an effect of bias. Bias also leads people to cherry pick evidence. This is when they use, they select only the evidence that's gonna best support their argument um, and they ignore anything that might challenge it. And this can really manipulate data if you, if you leave out uh, important data or evidence that, that challenges your argument. That's a, a very um, you know, extreme example of bias. And finally, bias um, just manifests in a kind of general unwillingness to listen to alternative perspectives. People who are extremely biased are, are unwilling or unable to think about things in a different way. So these are some of the main effects, again, or manifestations of bias. So let's look at the example, and this is the example that's given in the homework assignment. Everyone in my neighborhood favors McGraw for president, therefore McGraw is sure to win. So we want to ask ourselves, is this evidence that's being used representative or biased? Is the argument a solid argument or is it a biased argument? 
So let's think about why is it biased? And it, it is, obviously. Why is it biased? Well, one neighborhood does not represent the voting population of the entire country. You can't know from the people on one street, one row of houses, how the entire population is going to vote. It's just simply not at all representative. If you're in a rich neighborhood, people are going to vote, are going to maybe uh, uh, favor one type of candidate. If you're in a poor neighborhood, they might favor a different type of can candidate, depending on if you're uh, a rural uh, sit, if this is a rural area or an urban area, et cetera, et cetera, all those things will, will change. So the one neighborhood is not at all representative of the entire country. And even within the neighborhood, it's quite unlikely that, that you can know that everyone supports McGraw. And it's you know very unlikely that everyone on a street would have all the exact same beliefs. It's probably only those people who advertise their preference, people who put the signs up on their lawns. So also, how did we even get this evidence? How do you know that everyone on your neighborhood, uh, in your neighborhood supports McGraw? So these are some of the reasons why it's a biased uh, argument, why the evidence is biased not representative, and why essentially it's a weak argument. It doesn't really prove its claim that McGraw is going to win the presidency. So how could we improve a sample like this or, or an argument like this? Well, we need a representative sample. Rather than a biased sample, which is only one group or one side or one small section of the entire population being considered, a representative sample will have roughly the same balance of characteristics and members as the larger group that's being considered. So if we were to try to find a representative sample of the U.S. voting population, it wouldn't be just people from one neighborhood. We need to have men and women. We need to have people of all different levels of education. We need to have people of all different economic status, people of different age groups, people of different races, people from different parts of the country. All these different factors that might uh, that that uh, create a diverse voting population. We need to somehow be able to represent all of them, try to balance and have our sample be roughly the same proportion or ratios as the larger group. So it needs to include everyone or every type of person or, or thing that's in the larger group that you're trying to make an argument about. So here's another example. This is a longer one. And this again is also in the homework assignment. Derek Weatherby took a, a job at Schnucks, a grocery store in St. Louis, to help pay his way through college. As his student debt mounted, he took a break from school, planning to go back when his financial situation improved. But with the economy still stagnant after uh, years after the financial crisis, Derek has found that many of the other employees at Schnucks are college graduates themselves, some with degrees from prestigious schools. It seems that a lot of college graduates can't find work that pays any better than the job that Derek already has. So looking for bias, we know that these are all biased because the uh, assignment tells us they're all biased, but what exactly is the bias and how do we determine it and how do we determine how to eliminate it or improve it? Well, first we wanna look for what's the generalization that the argument is trying to prove? What's the argument's claim? Well, the conclusion or claim of the argument here is that it seems that lots of college graduates can't find work that pays any better than the job that Derek already has. That's the generalization, the argument that's being uh, asserted here. Okay, now that we know the claim, we want to look for the evidence that's being used to prove this claim. So what does the author say proves that most college graduates can't get better jobs than Derek? Um, it's the fact that Derek has found that many of the other employees at Schnucks where he works are also college graduates. So based on the fact that the other employees at Schnucks are college graduates, the author says, therefore, college graduates as a whole cannot get better jobs than working at Schnucks. Okay, now we know the claim and we know the evidence used to support it. So now we want to look at the sample and compare it with the group that it's supposed to represent. We've got the sample population in the evidence, in the argument itself, and then the claim is about uh, this larger group. So the group that the argument as a whole is talking about is the lots of college graduates. So that sounds like a pretty big group. But what's the sample used to prove it? Which, what subsection of college graduates are we looking at? 
Well, we're looking at those graduates that are employees at Schnucks, which is a grocery store in St. Louis. So now we want to ask ourselves, is this sample representative of the group? Are the employees at Schnucks, who, uh, which is a grocery store in St. Louis, are those employees at Schnucks, which are college graduates, are they representative of college graduates as a whole? The answer, of course, is no, they're not. So let's go on to the next slide. So the evidence is only about the employees, the college graduates at one store in one city. Very limited in terms of its uh, uh, population, right? Very limited geographically, um, very limited because it's only one single store. But the claim is about all college graduates in the United States or college graduates as a group. So the evidence is far too limited. The sample is far too limited to prove this generalization. We cannot make a generalization about college graduates in the entire United States from the group that work at one store in one city. It should be fairly obvious, right? So how do we improve it? Well, we need to make the sample more representative. How could we make the sample more representative? We need to include college graduates from different parts of the country. And we need to include graduates from different types of schools. We only get those from prestigious schools mentioned in this uh, example, in this problem. But we need to include graduates from community colleges, from uh, big state universities, from small colleges, from private schools, from public schools. So we need to have a much more diverse group of college graduates. And again, they'd have to be racially mixed, uh, mixed in terms of their ages, mixed in terms of their um, genders, all those sorts of things. Um, so really what we need to do is somehow get a sample that could include all college graduates. That is not that we're sampling, we're not getting evidence from all college graduates, but any college graduate could be included in the sample theoretically, not only those, those graduates that are working at Schnucks. Okay, our last example, let's look at the example, the first problem from the homework assignment. And I'll uh, walk you through the kind of basic steps of how to solve it, but leave the actual solving of this and the others up to you. So here's the, the problem, the first problem from the homework. Republican voters are starting to lean more libertarian. An extreme libertarian candidate easily won the most votes in a mock election held at the Republican Leadership Conference. The conference, held just outside the libertarian candidate's home state, drew busloads of libertarian supporters, as well as political junkies from further afield who wanted to hear from early contenders for the Republican presidential nomination. So again, we know that there's bias here. Now we want to figure out what is the bias? In what way is this sample biased, not representative? Okay, first step, of course, what's the claim and who are the group that we're talking about? Well, the claim is about Republican voters are starting to lean more libertarian. That's the argument that's being asserted here. So the group under discussion, the group that we're making the claim or generalization about is Republican voters. So that's a pretty big group. That's, you know, roughly 50% of the population of the United States. So we're making a claim about half of the United States, roughly. So what's the evidence that's used to prove that Republican voters are being more or turning libertarian. The evidence is that a libertarian candidate won a mock election at the Republican leadership conference. And so based on the fact that this libertarian candidate won and the, the argument specifies won easily, the author is saying, well, that proves that Republicans are now more libertarian because they voted for this libertarian candidate. Now, we want to ask ourselves, though, who is in the sample? Who are these people who voted in this mock election at the Republican leadership conference? Well, two particular groups are mentioned. One is busloads of libertarian supporters. And the other are political junkies. So those are the two types of people, those are the two groups that are mentioned that are as being uh, making up primarily the sample. So we need to think about in what way are they representative or how are they representative or not? And is there any other important information given to us in this uh, problem? 
Uh, the fact that the conference is held just outside the libertarian candidate's home state. That's also important because that tells us, again, something about how the sample was chosen. The sample, uh, the, the event, the evidence took place at an, a conference just outside the candidate's home state. And the sample that's being considered, the people at that conference, were libertarian supporters and political junkies. So the questions that we want to ask ourselves and that you'll want to ask yourselves for this problem and uh, for the other problems on the homework. One, are busloads of libertarian supporters and political junkies representative of all Republican voters? Do those two groups provide us with a cross section of the entire population of Republican voters? Second question would be, are those at the conference representative of all Republican voters? Let's assume that in addition to the libertarian supporters and the political junkies, there were some other just Republican voters. So does the conference as a whole represent all Republican voters? Or is it maybe fairly limited, just those people who could get to the conference or just those people who were near the conference? And that leads to the third question, does the location of the conference and the fact that it's just outside this libertarian candidate's home state, does that affect the sample's validity? So to go back to our overview, how do you solve this problem, right? You wanna identify the claim, identify the generalization that's being made, identify the evidence that's used to support the claim, what is used to prove that claim, and then compare the sample in that evidence, the, the particular uh, 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 members of the group in the, in the evidence that's being used, how do they compare to the overall group? Do they provide an accurate representative cross-section? So if your group, for example, contains men and women, would a group that contains, would a sample that contains only men be representative? No. Would a sample that contains only women be representative? No. Would the sample, if the sample contained men and women, would it be representative? It'd be more representative, right? Because it contains, it has the same, uh, roughly the same balance or the same membership as the whole group. And then in order to figure out how to improve the sample, how to make it less biased and more representative, identify who else should be included or who instead should be included in this sample. How could you make the sampling more representative by looking for a broader cross-section of people. Who's left out, essentially? So finally, um, to complete your homework, you're gonna go through those steps that we just talked about, follow the examples that I've given here, looking for the bias by identifying the claim, comparing the evidence that's used with the group that it's supposed to be talking about. And then in your responses, what you wanna do is one, explain why the sample is biased, what's bad about the sample or weak or limited about the sample, suggest how it could be improved, what changes would you make to improve it, make it a better sample, and then explain why those changes will make the sample more representative. How will those samples improve, uh, how will those changes, excuse me, improve the sample? So hopefully this has been helpful, giving you some advice on how to approach the homework assignment for this week. If you have any questions, feel free to email uh, or contact me otherwise. Um, otherwise, I wish you the day you wish yourselves. I hope you have a great day and a great weekend, and I will see you next time in class.